Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today it's going to be the update to the Nature's Bounty build. The Warden Tank for the Blackwood Chapter. This is a double ice tank in every sense of the word. You will have massive or almost full uptime on Minor Brittle, but with a bit of a twist. If you tank well and you stack stuff up and you keep doing what you should be doing as a tank, for free, you will blow up entire rooms. So, if you want to see some more of this, stay tuned. Everything is going to be explained. So first of all, we're going to go into the stats. Just bear in mind, of course, there is a bug at the moment where if you first log into your house and you've got food on, it doesn't show your flat stats properly. So you may have to reapply your food. However, we've already fixed that. It is a PTS issue, so hopefully it doesn't come through the game. Can't say that I've checked that, but still. 28k max magicka, almost 29k in fact. 44k max health, almost 45, and 14k stamina. 1.1k recovery for both magicka and stamina. Now, bear in mind we are blocking with the magicka bar, so the massive bar we've got is really helpful for that. So you won't get recovery while blocking, but if you do drop your block because you need to heavy attack or whatever, then of course that recovery kicks in. The stamina recovery is going to be really helpful for us anyway because we can't maintain stamina with a heavy attack, not using any physical weapons, so that nice base recovery really does uh, help us out alongside a decent sized pool. So we can break free and dodge roll and even sprint if we have to without any major issues bust right out let's do that again um so in the meantime we are sitting on 3k spell damage which will go up i'll show you in a moment 31k spell resistance and 28.7k physical the physical is a bit lower than the spell sure but if you get a minor bonus in your group you'll be fine you'll almost cap out 64 points into max health and we are using max health max magic of food there is a bit of a bug on the stat sheet but what you're looking at is roughly 5k for each there very very helpful you don't need the tri stat stuff because we're only using stam very very rarely we need the magicka at the health overall now spell damage wise some of the sets we're using do require higher spell damage to benefit from them more so we've already got that covered so if you hit the dummy you've obviously got minor courage and we've got our uh, major courage in fact and we've got a buff on our back bar as well which pushes us to 4.4 now there are going to be some options in the video so bear with me on this one, which will actually push that to 5 and even a 6k spell damage option if you really want to. But just bear in mind, of course, that is going to alter the setup slightly, so your survival will go down. So you can go a little bit squishier with more damage, or you can go nice and healthy and very hard to kill and have a little bit less damage. It's a tip and scales of the build. Essentially, it's a tank that can blow stuff up. Which way you want to go with it depends on how comfortable you are in content. Either way, it's all going to be covered. Just bear in mind, of course, Mundestone wise, we are actually using the Mage Mundestone to push our Magicka. As you can see there, I did hit the dummy, so we've got some dummy buffs, basically a Warhorn, which gives us now 31k max Magicka, which is insane, especially since it's our block and resource bar. So you can go with a Mage if you really want to, or if you're really comfortable with your resources and you're quite happy to drop the 2k, you can, of course, go with the Lord, increase your health, and obviously update your survivability a little bit. Or you can go with the um apprentice I had to think about that so you can get more spell damage again you'll have a very healthy amount of survival and damage output and resource all at the same time the choice really is yours it's entirely up to you now into the skills i'm going to explain these in detail hopefully these make sense but of course i'm going to show you where to get them from what to morph them to all that good stuff as well everything is here for a reason so before you look at it and go oh this is crap and switch off there is a reason for it so animal companion fourth ability to unlock Starts off as Betty Netch, morph it to Blue Betty. Activate this and you will get Magicka recovery, basically. It doesn't show in your stats, but you do get Magicka every second for 25 seconds. And it will give you Major Sorcery and Brutality, increasing your weapon and spell damage, which is important. And we cleanse a negative effect off of ourselves once every 5 seconds. This is free. Keep it running. Next up is, of course, Arctic Blast. It's in the Winter's Embrace skill line. Third ability you unlock starts off as Arctic Wind. Morph it to Arctic Blast. This will heal you initially, and then it will heal you every one second for five seconds. Now, the heal will get larger and larger the more health you have. So if you have your Minor Toughness buff on, like we did a moment ago, we'll get to that in the passives later, don't worry, um, that will make it stronger. And if you do spec into more health, it will make it stronger as well. So you can have more health on your setup, but you have to be careful because you'll be dropping Magicka. This costs Magicka but scales off of health. So a big pool doesn't make a difference for Magicka, but we do want the big bar because we're going to be blocking with that. Now, 
Also, this will do damage, frost damage in fact, in area of effect, close by, within 6 meters. And if enemies are hit 3 times by the damage, they will be stunned for 4 seconds. This is an area of effect stun and frost damage. Frost damage is incredibly important, we're going to stack lots of it. Next up is your bread and butter as an ice tank. Destruction staff skill line. Third ability one lock starts off as destructive touch. Morph it to destructive clench. Make sure you're holding an ice staff. Because if you are, it will taunt the enemy and immobilize them. So it's very important to note. It does have range, of course, but the taunt is 15 seconds. If you let that run out, it's going to run away and punch someone. Don't let it run out. Don't spam it, but don't let it run out. You can overlap it. So make sure you maintain this at all times. Next up is Razor Caltrops. This is in our Salt skill line. Just bear in mind, you don't have to go to Cyrodiil for this. You can just go into Battlegrounds. If you lose all day long, it doesn't matter. You still get points. Easy to unlock. Anyway, starts off as Caltrops Morphet to Razor Caltrops. The reason we want this is to put it on the ground, first of all, and give um, a debuff to all surrounding enemies. Actually, up to a maximum of six. Unless one dies, then another one can be affected by it. But it essentially does damage over time as well. So the damage over time every one second we do need. That is part of the build. We are going to want it. It's not a massive tick of damage, but it does contribute to damage over time. And we are stacking it. You'll see why later when we get to the gear, unless you already know the build. Now, when enemies step inside the major breach, they have that effect in them for four seconds, so everyone can hit them harder. But if they leave, obviously after four seconds it will fall off. If they stay in it, it will just keep reapplying it over and over and over. So as long as you maintain this on the ground, you've got a debuff on everything. So taunt them with this, debuff them with this. But again, bear in mind, this is damage over time, so is this. And... We're going to be having more of that as we go. Now, next up is Frost Pulsar. This is actually Pulsar. It starts off as Impulse Morph at the Pulsar from the Destro Staff skill line. Last one you unlock. Make sure, of course, you're holding an Ice Staff. Otherwise, this doesn't become a taunt. We need that. But um, this will hit all enemies in area of effect within six meters of you. And if they can be affected by debuffs such as Minor Mangle, which is applied to this, it will reduce their maximum health by 10% for 10 seconds. So your group basically can kill them quicker. This doesn't affect major bosses, but there are some big enemies in the game that can be hit by it. And most trash pulls can be affected by this, even if they're kind of elite type enemies. Now, not all of them. Just bear in mind, you'll have to gauge that yourself throughout content because it does vary. But it's a very, very powerful uh, debuff nonetheless. And at the same time, if you activate this, yourself and your group members will actually have a six second reduction to income and damage. So they'll get minor protection, which is 5%, 5 less damage for them. So it's a protective ability and it boosts the amount of damage they can put out potentially because there's 10% of the enemy's health missing. Keep this up as much as you can. We are using a weapon that's going to utilize this even more. It's very important. Permafrost is our main ultimate on our front bite. You don't have to have this, but I would highly recommend it. Not just for passes, but because it does protect your group. It's very, very strong. Starts off as Sleet Storm, morph it to Permafrost from the Winter's Embrace skill line. This will do damage over time. Every second for 12 seconds, hitting all enemies around you. It says 9 there, I know, but we've got buffs and bonuses, so it's a bit longer. Now... What this will also do is this will grant the group major protection. So you've got minor protection here and major protection here. Minor, major, stack, minor, minor, and major, major. Do not. These two are separate. They are a smaller and larger variation of the debuff. They stack. Now, while this is also active, any enemies that you hit are slowed. So they'll be very, very slow movement, 70% in fact. And you'll, by default, apply a chilled status effect. Chilled reduces the damage that the enemies can do. That is Minor Maim. So although you do have Minor Maim here, just in case this isn't running, this will apply it. And Ice can in general anyway. But the Chilled status effect, if you're holding an Ice Staff, has a side effect. As long as you are currently holding an Ice Staff on the bar you're on, when you apply Chilled, you will apply Minor Brittle, which will increase the crit damage that people can do to the targets. We have an abundance of ice damage. We've got ice damage here, we've got it here, we've got it on our taunt, we've got it here, and we've got some on the back bar as well. We have a massive amount of frost damage. We will always have a very good uptime on chilled status effects and therefore have a very high uptime on minor brittle. That 
is for the overall build, but this particular ultimate does apply it without fail. So use this as much as possible. No, it's not a Warhorn, but yes, it does give you a buff to crit damage. So if someone fires a Warhorn over top of this, it's happy days. You get both bonuses. Now, the back bar. Expansive Frost Cloak, same skill line in fact, starts off as Frost Cloak, morph it to Expansive Frost Cloak. The other one gives you minor protection. You don't need it because you've got it here. So use this one. It's got a much, much wider range. 28 meters. Anyone caught inside of that will get a massive major resolve resistance buff. Every single class has their own one. If you're the one bringing this for the entire group, nobody needs to slot it anymore. They can slot something else, perhaps a damage shield or a heal or even another DPS skill. This will give you physical and spell resistance and this is the only version of it that will cover the whole group. So everyone else's major resolve buff is personal. The Warden has a group one. Don't let that run out. Blockade of Frost is next, of course. It's in the Destruction Staff skill line. Second ability to unlock starts off as Wall of Elements. Morph it to Elemental Blockade. Now, yes, of course, you could use the other one, which does more damage because it blows up at the end. But this one lasts longer. We want constant ticks of damage over time. We want constant ticks of ice so we can do more chill damage and apply more minor brittle. And we want to make sure that we can consistently fire our back bar glyph without overcasting and without running out of magicka all day long. Most tanks use a sword and board where they block with their stamina and they use magic abilities to buff and um, alter the, the tide of the fight, CC and all that kind of stuff. For this particular build, the same bar for our blocking is being used for our utility so we have to maintain it so the cheaper the better the less often we cast the better so the longer duration made more sense now just bear in mind because this is ice not only does it do frost damage every one second it can apply chilled if you apply chilled while holding a frost staff as i just explained you will get minor brittle increasing everybody else's damage you're buffing the group for doing nothing you just keep this down that's it no extra special backflips no special sets just keep it up now if they are chilled, they also become immobilized. So you have very high control. You can actually pin enemies on the ground by just leaving a dot down. Keep this up. Don't let it run out. It's really important. And if you do apply this at the beginning of the of the um, cast, you'll get a damage shield and so will your group. And of course, when it stops, the same will apply. And it's a huge damage shield as well. And it's only for projectiles, by the way. But very helpful indeed, especially if you're against something like Raka or Lord Warden and you need damage shields from range or anything else where you need it, it's really helpful. Elemental Drain is in the same skill line, that's next. Weakness to elements morphed to Elemental Drain. Attach this to the enemy, it will be affected with Major Breach. So physical and spell resistance is reduced, so anyone who hits them will hit them harder. Technically, yes, we have it in Caltrops anyway, but this is single target and it does apply minor magic steel. So anyone that hits it will get magic back every one second, including you, yes, even if you're blocking. So if you have this down and you're doing damage with this attached to it while your Betty Netch is running, you will actually get magic back from this and magic back from this while blocking on something that you are not able to recover from. So you can't recover while blocking. So it's really, really handy. But apart from that, this is here because of our weapon choice. We do have a specific weapon that will utilize this skill and it's free. Now, Frozen Devices next is in the Winter's Embrace skill line. Starts off as Frozen Gate, morph it to Frozen Device. Very simply put, this is your pull ability. Put it on the ground. You can actually put three down at once. They last for 30 seconds unless something steps in it. If they can step in it and be pulled, they'll come straight to you. When they're in your face, they will be affected with Major Maim, reducing the damage they can do by 10% for four seconds, and they will be immobilized on the spot. So you pull them in and they're stuck. That is your control ability. Very handy. Don't spam it unnecessarily. Just use it when you need to. If it's a melee target and you've ranged taunted it perhaps, which, by the way, is a swap out for this bar here. You can actually put... Um, where's it gone? Undaunted skill line. I did skip that. You can use this. Use the stamina one, not the magical one, because you've got an extra pull there you're not really using. You can put a ranged taunt here. This one is ranged, but this one will be longer. Anyway, if you were using that, melee stuff will come to you. And range stuff won't. So pull the range stuff in, not the melee stuff. So maintain your resources um, effectively. However, it's going to take some practice anyway. So just get used to it and you'll be fine. And it sounds really harsh. Just get used to it. But it's true. Practice. Gripping shards is next. That was hard to say. Winter's Embrace. Second ability to unlock. Starts off as Impaling Shards. Morph it to Gripping Shards. The other morph scales off of maximum magicka and spell damage and all that good stuff. This one does not. 
This one is placed on the ground underneath us and it scales off of your maximum health. So the higher your health, the more damage it does. Now, while damage isn't necessarily the main strong point of a tank, this will help us. And we are trying to stack damage over time for a very good reason. This does damage over time on the ground. It is frost damage. It can apply chilled. You will get minor brittle. And it pins them on the spot. This can immobilize enemies. So this one can immobilize the enemies. And this one can by chance. This one does by default. This does by chance. Now also just bear in mind. The higher your health. The higher your chance to apply chilled. We have so much control so many snares so many immobilizers so much chilled to reduce the damage everyone does and so much minor brittle to increase the damage your whole group does some people make it very difficult to apply chilled and there are massive downtimes this particular build being double ice staff and an abundance of ice damage over time we have a huge uptime on that really helpful debuff or buff rather that people so very hard try to achieve um, also very much try to achieve. Words are hard today. Now, the ulti on the back bar is, of course, from the green balance. It's our oh shit ulti. It only costs 90. Starts off a secluded grove. Morph it to enchanted forest. This will heal everyone on the ground initially. And then, if they're caught inside of it, of course. And then heal them over 6 seconds. Once a second. This also generates 20 ultimate. If the initial heal on you or anybody else... Hits them when they're under 50% health. So if you hit five people with this and they're all really, really low health, you can actually get 100 ultimate back straight away. So you can basically spam it. So this is your oh shit heal button. Now if you wanted to, you can of course swap this out for elemental rage, which will basically be a big snowstorm. Or you can swap it for warhorn if you really want to, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend the warhorn for most situations. You can just slap it on a healer somewhere or maybe even one of the DPS and you can just keep up permafrost to make sure that you're the one protecting the group while giving them some nice buffs as well. But the choice is yours. It's up to you. You could just warhorn on the back, permafrost on the front, or just keep the heal in case you need it and then permafrost on top of it. And that's also something you can consider as well. If you do fire this and you get loads and loads of ultimate back straight away, you're on the road to get permafrost quite quickly. So it's up to you. Now, passives are very important. We're going to go into these not so much in detail, but you want to know which ones to get and why. Mostly all of them, to be fair. But anyway, now animal companions, if you have a skill that ends from the animal companion skill line, you will heal. This is free. Recasting it makes it end and start. So you get a heal from it. Free heal. Easy peasy. Uh, when you cast an animal companion ability while you're in combat, you get four ultimate. Can happen once every eight seconds. If you are not doing much and you just want to build ulti, once every few seconds, just recast that for free. Um, increases your magicka and stamina recovery while you have an animal companion ability slotted. So on the front bar, that's higher. This increases your damage done by each one slotted as well. Now, we only have one, but it does contribute and we are going to be doing damage. We're not applying damage in the same way as the DPS, but we will be doing damage. This one is a bit hit and miss, depending on whether you're going to use that skill or not. However, you are going to need a couple of these. When you heal yourself or an ally under 40% health with a green balance ability, you gain major mending. So the heals are stronger if they're low health. And don't forget, you get ulti back. Uh, when you heal an ally with a green balance ability, you gain 250 magical or stamina, whichever resource pool is lower. And this can happen once every one second. So if you do cast your trees every second, you'll actually get your lowest resource pool back. So our stamina for us. So we could be dodge rolling and breaking free and stuff and running low. This can actually help keep that up. This increases healing done with green balance abilities. If they're on your bar. It, that only applies to the back bar. So it's not massive. You can get it if you want it. But you're not going to use it all the time. And this you are going to want. If you heal anyone. Yourself or somebody else. You get minor toughness. And so do they. Increases their max health by 10% for 20 seconds. So if you're using um, this for example. Arctic Blast or the Betty. Or some of the gear we're using. Then the buff applies to you. If you use this and catch anyone in it. The buff applies to them too. Winter's Embrace is important. You want all of these. Increases the chance of applying Chilled with Winter's Embrace abilities by 200% of what the base would be. So, if you go into your Help options, you will find a tutorial section where you can look up Elemental Status Effects. You will see very clearly which types of abilities have which chance to apply that stuff. Now, 
since we're using AoE abilities, they generally have a 1% chance. Then, of course, you have the increase to that with the Destro Passes, which are coming up. Then you have the increase to this. In a mass situation, this is very, very easy to apply. If it's a Glyph, it's 20%, then, then you can increase that by even more, depending on your stats and bonuses and buffs. There's lots of different ways to enhance it, and you can have traits as well that can enhance it. But this passive here for us is essential because we are definitely applying shield there anyway. But if it runs out, of course, you've got this still running and that has a higher chance. Then you've got this, which can also have a higher chance. You get the idea. It's, it's going to be very, very easy for us to apply. And the chilled status effect on this particular skill is not the 1% it would usually be. It is much, much higher than that because it scales higher off of your health. Again, that's probably the long way to go about it, but... The tutorial's there, you can read that if you want, but we have massive uptime on chilled, so higher, minor, brittle. Also, enemies that have recently been chilled take 10% more critical damage and healing from you. So if you do crit, which is going to be rare for us, we'll do more damage. This increases your resistances for both physical and spell for each ability of this type on your bar. This reduces the effectiveness of snares on you because, well, why would you be really slow if you're used to controlling everything else in ice instead? And this increases your magic and frost damage. We are going to be doing frost damage. This is going to help. Um, destruction stuff. Get every single one of these. They're very important. But just to keep it simple. If you heavy attack with an ice stuff, you get a damage shield. You are going to have to heavy attack. This build is using one bar for blocking and for using all of your skills. Apart from caltrops. So you're going to have to maintain it. If you hold block all day, you're going to run out. If you heavy attack, you're going to keep your resources up. Happy days. The trick to that is understand the mechanics of what you're up against and look for that window of opportunity that's you playing the game in a skillful manner not just holding block by default and winning you will have to heavy attack now just bear in mind for those of you that think off balance is useless if you heavy attack while something is off balance your heavy attack will do 70 percent more damage for us not that important but you will get double resources back if you're this type of character and you're trying to maintain that off balance is a godsend Alongside a couple of synergies, your full resources all day long. So if you do understand the passives, bonuses, buffs, and debuffs that are in the game, and you do understand off balance, especially if you have watched my Easy Sork or off balance template build, you will see how that complements this particular tank, and you will not run out if you can pay attention to your mechanics. But again, if you do heavy, not only do you get resources back, you get free damage shield as well. Also, for having this passive, while the ice staff is equipped, you will block with your Magicka instead of Stamina. Now, of course, you can remove this passive if you like, and you can block with your Stamina instead. But I would not recommend that for this build, because if you do, then you're in trouble, because you are going to have no way to get back your Stamina. We're using magical weapons, not physical. So we can't simply Heavy Attack and get Stamina back. It's only the magical one. So you want to get this passive. Keep up your heavies, keep up your resources. The damage shield will protect you while you're taking damage. Increase pen, that's gonna help. Increase your chance of applying elemental status effects. As long as we're holding a nice stuff, not only do we have the bonus to our Winter's Embrace skills, we have a flat out increase to elemental status effects across the board. So more chilled and minor brittle. This will increase the amount of uh, damage that you can block, basically. You can take less and less damage and it will re reduce the cost of them. And, if you kill an enemy with a Destro skill, or Light or Heavy from your Destro, you'll actually get Magicka back. And if you absorb damage while that Heavy Attack damage shield is on you, or while the Wall of Elements um, damage shield is on you, you'll actually get Magicka back as well. It's very helpful. Um, light Armor, we're using none. Medium, we are actually using two pieces, because we haven't got a choice based on the setup. This is something that you don't necessarily have to get. You don't need the crit. You will want the Stamina Recovery and Reduction to Cost. You can get the sneak stuff if you really want to, but it's not massively important. The weapon damage will contribute to your caltrops, so you can get that. And of course, you want the movement speed and dodge roll reduction. So get athletics and agility, and then get Windwalker. The rest you won't need, unless you really want to. You could have the crit bonus for a little bit of crit if you use your caltrops, but it's not going to make or break the game. We're using five heavy, so we're not going to go over these two bonuses here. They're default. You can read them in your own time, but you are going to want every single one of these. This will increase your physical and spell resistance per piece, increase your health recovery and restore of magicka and stamina per piece while you're getting hit once every four seconds. Uh, this will increase your max health per piece. This will increase your stamina or magicka return 
depending on your weapon type, by each piece of heavy armor worn. So if you heavy attack, you get resources back. If it's off balance, you get even more. If you got your heavy passives, you get even more. You must heavy. This is a very clear passive for heavy armor users. Why are you not heavy attacking? Do it, you'll keep your resources up. You will have to learn mechanics. Increase your health, or healing received rather, per piece worn as well. Fighter's Guild is not massively important. Um, because we don't have any abilities on the bar, so ignore those. Mage's Guild as well, we're not using any of that. Sigic, no. Thieves, no. Undaunted, yes. You are going to want this. Again, I went over this earlier briefly. You can swap Caltrops for Inner Beast if you want a really long range taunt, as opposed to the 15 meter one you've got here, or both combined. It's tied up to you. But, I mean, I generally don't. The most enemies are close enough anyway, because you can pull them in. Um, but, any synergy you take will give you resources back. Take every single one of them. No matter what they do, you'll get this as well. And for each type of armor worn, we get extra resources. So we are using two types, one medium, sorry, two medium and five heavy. So therefore, you get 4% flat resources across the board for all three types. We are, surprise, a Breton. I know, this was previously a Nord. However, we're not. You can still be a Nord, that's absolutely fine. Your resistances are great, you get ulti back, sure. But... This gives us more Magicka, so we've got a bigger pool to block with, to use our abilities with, and all that good stuff. And this gives us Spell Resistance, so not far off what the Nord gives us anyway. You can plug the Physical with a minor buff from your group anyway, or with a Trait Change. And we get Recovery, which is quite nice. Your Spell Resistance is also doubled if you get afflicted with any status effects of the Magical types. And finally, for those of you that can't recover or sustain just bear in mind by the way recovery only works while you're not blocking if you're heavy attack and that recovery kicks in seven percent reduction to cost for all of your magicka abilities so we have stupid flat resource sustain just when you cast the skills even though you'll be heavy attacking your skills are much much cheaper now alchemy is very important make sure you get medicinal use your potions will last longer don't let your potions run out. If you use it at the end of your really, really low bar, you're doing it wrong. Use them all the time. Maintain it. We're using tripods, by the way. Now we're going to explain how important the reduction to cost is and the other options for the gear. So, if you've used the previous setup, do not panic. You are fine, but you might find some slight alterations in here. So, we're using the Black Rose Ice Staff. It does not have to be perfected, but if it is perfected, you will get extra um, penetration. You'll get a 1190 extra pen bonus. That will contribute to your damage, but it's not the end of the world. The most important thing is to make sure that this is defending. Have your poisons on to give you more magicka back. That, by the way, is basically a tripe, uh, a spell pot, but with Alkahest instead of Larkin's Tears. But this ability here is very important. Ignore all that stuff because that's the poison. This is what you're looking at. Reduces the cost of impulse, which we are using a lot. And impulse places a lingering elemental damage on your target. So enemies hit will be hit by an, a different effect. They will actually be hit by 1.6k flame damage, 1.6k shock damage, and 1.8k frost damage. Remember, we do more frost damage. Over an 8 second period, and each element ticks once over the duration so it will do fire then the next tick will boost shock then the next tick will do frost and then it will run out and then you can cast it again but the damage scales off of your higher weapon or spell damage now you saw earlier that we have about 4k spell damage we can actually go up to about six but it depends on the build now the only thing you have to do is apply pulsar you apply it you've now got an area of effect damage over time and yes of course with that being the last tick is frost damage that can of course apply chilled but also the flame and the shock can contribute to other status effects as well. Back bar is Vatashran eye stuff. Again, if you have the perfected version, you will have an extra pen bonus, but you don't need it. You can get the normal one. Both of these can be acquired on the normal arenas, so you don't have to go and do the really difficult stuff. This one, you've got two options for. You can either use infused with a weapon of spell damage increase so that your proc here is stronger, of course, because it scales off of weapon of spell damage, or you can have a Magicka return glyph instead. Just bear in mind, your resources may be easier to recover because you're not heavy attacking so much, but your glyph is doing the work for you, but your spell damage will suffer horrendously, which means your damage stuff will be weak. So this worked out really, really nice. Now this, if you apply elemental drain, this is the reason for it being on there. 
within 15 meters of you, as long as you don't break that beam, you'll have a 10 second tether to the target. And this will do damage over time. And each time it deals damage, it'll get 1% stronger, dealing up to 20% more. Now, I know it says 10 seconds, so you'd think 20% more is impossible because it can only go 10 ticks, right? False. It can go 10 ticks, but it counts for surrounding enemies. Because this is area of effect and anyone caught in the beam will take damage, if you now put the beam through 10 enemies and it ticks once, that's 10% increase right away. Ticks twice, there's your 20. Now it's a cap, it can hit as hard as you like. This can only apply every 10 seconds, so obviously don't over spam it, but the ability's free anyway. And it scales off of your highest weapon and spell damage. So spell damage will be higher for us. So this one here, you minor mangle the entire error of effect that, um, pull that you've got, plus apply uh, protection to your group, plus apply frost damage, and apply more chill and all that good stuff. And then you've got this as well, which does apply, apply a damage over time effect of three different elemental types. You get the idea. You've got two dots here for free, which can all fire status effects. Now, something to bear in mind, of course. If you do have the Frost Pulsar, your status effect chances are higher. That particular morph of it has higher status full stop. So it's almost guaranteed that you're going to apply minor brittle. And we can demonstrate that here. So we'll run over to these here. Minor brittle, minor brittle, and again, and again, and again. It's really simple. It's on them. So, bear that in mind. That's just one skill. You stack them all up. If that has downtime, everything else will catch up with it. The gear on the body is leeching. So you can have infused on the head and the legs or the head and the chest and you can put two magical glyphs or if you're really comfy with your resources you can change it to health, that's up to you. But it says health, healing taken and health again and when you take damage you will put poison under the target every one second doing damage and all the damage you do will heal you back 100% of it. Bear in mind the more damage it does the bigger the heal and the more healing received and healing done you have the bigger the heal in return as well so it will stack and stack and stack. This can get very, very strong, especially in big ad pulls. This will keep you alive. So you'll have your own sustainability as far as your health is concerned. And you are doing damage over time and applying minor brittle all the time. Now, you can change this out if you want, but you will be squishier. If you want more damage, you can swap out for Ice Furnace. This will give you more magicka and spell damage, a little crit bonus as well, but just for dealing frost damage, which we do all day long, enemies around you will take damage in fire every one second. Now that looks like a very low amount, that actually goes to 1.8 with all our spell damage bonuses, it's just because we're not buffed at the moment, it shows 730. Higher the spell damage, the stronger it is. But here, you are going to get to a situation where you might realise that it's not really worth it, because although this will do more damage, if your health is higher, this will do more damage, and all you have to do is get hit. So getting hit, you do damage every one second and survive. Or getting hit doesn't do anything, and you do roughly the same amount of damage, but you now no longer survive. There's barely anything in it, but the choice is yours. I know some people like to see the effects. As long as you've got an active healer, you'll be fine. But if not, definitely leeching is very, very strong. You want leeching on the full body. Now the jewelry in two pieces, you want a Zerblite. So the belt and the hands are actually some of the lowest resistances. So obviously you're not going to get such a hit to your resist not having these as heavy. It has weapon crit, stamina, and stam recovery. So your stamina and stam recovery is helpful for your CC because you can break free and dodge and stuff. But when you deal damage with a damage over time effect, it will stack up, up to 20. 20 ticks, in fact. If these hit 20, they will explode. And every enemy beside them will get hit by the damage. But... While this can only be affected on each target once, and then after it explodes, you have to wait two seconds, this can apply to several straight off. They all have their own individual cooldowns. It's not a set cooldown, it's an enemy cooldown. So one can blow up, another can blow up, another can blow up, and so on and so forth, like a domino effect, and they can all hit each other in area of effect. This, at the moment, is sitting on 5k area of effect disease damage. But once you get your buffs on... That is no longer the case. It's now 9.7. Once you get buffs outside of that, because you can get um, a small spell damage bonus, you can get minor courage, you can get some other bits and pieces, and I can show you how to alter this even more, you can actually make that do a lot, lot more. On average, you're looking at about 10k per enemy. Every two seconds, it will 
disappear, then stack up again, then boom, disappear, stack up again, and boom. But once you pack more spell damage, if you're comfortable, you can make that go to about 14, 15. Now, these are the traits you want in the jewelry. You have to be a Zerb Light because there's a medium set. You want Arcane on all of them, and then you want one spell damage and two reduction to cost glyphs. If you're very comfortable with your resources, if you can heavy attack more often and maintain it during mechanics, get rid of both of these and replace them with spell damage, and that will dramatically increase the output of this, and of course, this and this. So if you want more damage, you can spec loads of spell damage. If you want more survival, then of course, you can stack better recovery or reduction to cost and this kind of stuff. The choice is, of course, yours. But just as a bit of a demonstration, this is what it looks like. So you keep your dots down, keep your buffs up and debuffs, and then everything goes boom. And that's it. You do your tanky stuff like you would normally do. Heavy attack if you need to. I don't even have my buffs on. I've ran out. <laughs> and then you just do this. As you can see, my resources are absolutely fine. If you're in a fight, obviously you're going to be blocking, so your resources will go down a bit. Just make sure you heavy attack. That's it. And this will escalate throughout the fight as long as things are stacked up and you keep your buffs and debuffs running. You're fine. I mean, that's currently doing like 130k DPS and error of effect for, what, eight enemies? You can stack up eight to six enemies in most trash pools anyway. And, of course, single target. You can actually, just by being a tank, see buff, heal, resists, CC. Just by doing that, you can actually pump out about 20 to 25k DPS single target without trying. It's not a DPS build. It's a tank, but for doing tanky stuff, you apply buffs and debuffs all day long and stuff blows up. That can be a substantial amount higher depending on your setup, but I've, what you have to consider also is Leechin isn't firing right now, so I'm actually showing less damage than it can do. If you were using Ice Furnace, then yeah, that can go off and do a bit more. But let's get to the champion points. So this is quite straightforward. These ones, you need to unlock the other stuff, but they're... There's not much in it. I mean, you really are going to be unlocking these very, very early on. And they're passives. So no matter what type of build you are, everyone can use these and everyone can get them. It's inevitable. So what you want to do, obviously, is get your resistance bonuses in as quick as possible. Get these. And, of course, get your flat stats. But before that, what you want is your major slottables. Because you can only have four slottables at a time. Now, since we're built for a bit of damage and tanky... We want some maximum magicka here just to, to boost it. That doesn't actually have any prerequisites. You can buy that straight away. You want your extra air of effect damage because we are going to blow stuff up. But in order to get that, you will need um, 10 points into here first. So then you can unlock that and slot it. Then you want occult overload. So when you do blow stuff up, if you kill them, you'll do more damage in air of effect, which is really handy. And then you want some uh, mitigation to single target hits. So those four slottables are very useful for the build overall if you are experienced to get this by the way you'll have to unlock this just 10 points in there so 10 there unlocks this 10 there unlocks this this one's easy to get and here some points here will unlock this nice and easy in fact 10 so that's your basic everyday setup if you want more survival you can swap out some of the damagey stuff because you will need to sometimes for these two here or you can actually slot this so all direct damage that you do will heal you. So every time a Zerb Light goes off, no matter how many times it goes off in one big ad pool, every single one of them will heal you. It's really helpful. So the rest of it is inevitable. Get your slottables as soon as possible and then push these passives and fill them up. As you can see, I haven't even used all my points. In fact, I've used more points than I need to just to demonstrate. You can actually take a couple of hundred off that. The red tree is very simple. These require no prerequisites whatsoever, so get all three of those. Extra recovery, extra armor, and extra health. All these light, white, or yellow passives are inevitable. Get them in your own time. But what you will want, of course, is to unlock this, which is only a few points. You only need 15 there, then 10 here, and then 10 here. You can fill the health one as soon as possible if you want, just to get your health up, but you're looking for this one. This is your resource recovery. If you get kills, and you will, because stuff will blow up, and it'll be your fault, you'll get 1.5k magic back for every single kill, even if you're blocking. Really handy indeed. If you don't require that so much and you are really maintaining your resources, or if you're on a single target fight perhaps, then of course you want to go for this one here, which will actually mean if you are affected by a status effect, your core combat skills like block, dodge, break, and all that kind of stuff are cheaper. So the choice is yours. The green stuff doesn't matter. This is personal preference, but 
while you pick these and unlock them throughout your gameplay for whatever you need out of combat because they don't affect combat in general these ones are quite useful in content so this will increase the quality of loot from treasure chests this will make you run faster so between fights when you're not in combat you'll be quicker this has a chance to not even use a potion or poison and we are using them and they are expensive and this increases the duration of your food if you don't want them don't get them in fact if you don't put any points in here it doesn't matter and that is basically it for the build you've got two major options as far as your set choices are concerned previous setups are still fine they'll still be on the website no problem but of course you've got a squishy one if you've got loads of heals and you can get a bit more damage or you've got a really tanky survival one which actually does still apply damage anyway so it's win-win either way remember of course if you want to swap out your spell damage instead of reduction to cost you can one more thing to note that you can do if you really want to just because i tested it and it does work but quite honestly i wouldn't so this is to sate curiosity if you like you can replace this so you don't have the damage over time anymore from maim uh minor mangle even you can use a master's ice staff if you want to use this you'll have more spell damage on the front bar yes that means a little bit more flat unless your pen is suffering you will reduce the cost of your taunt. Yes. You will get 600 spell damage. Yes. But your taunt lasts 15 seconds. This only lasts four. You are going to find it almost impossible to fully time that and maintain the resources. Even with it being cheaper, you are going to be spamming taunt. And there's a couple of bosses that don't like that. So for those of you that were concerned, yes, it did get tested. Yes, it was quite fun. No, it isn't great for general content use. Unless you want to. Now, time for fashion. So, we are using the same setup as previous. This is on the website, of course, by the way. But, Wayward Guardian medium helmet. Wayward Guardian heavy chest. Silken ring heavy shoulders. Worm cult heavy gloves. Wayward Guardian heavy belt. I had to think about that. Wayward Guardian heavy legs. And, of course, Thorn Legion feet. That's in heavy also. Now, the staff is, of course, Ebon Shadow because it's the best staff in the game. Even though there's no best, this one is. And also, we've got Wayward Guardian on the back bar. Now, the colors we're actually using are two colors. We're using uh, Nightblade Indigo, I believe, which is here. And we are using... Um, I had to think about this one too. Void Pitch, which is from Batashran. You don't have to use those. You can use any black you like, really. But that one is the darkest of the dark. So that one's really, really cool. So basically just a purpley color or gray and a black. As you'll notice on most of my build videos, pretty much everything's all black anyway. They look cool. Why not? So thank you very much for watching. I huge appreciate your support. If you are not subscribing already on YouTube, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, don't forget, of course, you want to make sure you hit the notification bell so you know when the videos are live. Lots of people ask me when's the next video. If you hit that, you'll know, won't you? Also, if you want to help support outside the channel, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, the website zynodgaming.com, and of course, Instagram as well, which I'm trying to push a little bit more now. I should probably be a bit more active on there. Check that out as well if you get some time. Once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.